Hi everyone, thanks so much for your interest in learning more about coding. We're going to start out with Scratch and it's just one of many tools you could choose from but it's a good starting uh, place so I thought we would dive into it and later we can look at some other options as well. But just as a tour, um, here we are on the Scratch homepage and you can tell you're logged in if you look over here and you see your username. If not, a login button will be there and you can log in. Now having accounts and logging in is optional, but it's helpful uh, to save your work and be able to continue where you left off. If we move directly to the left of that, you'll see a file folder. That's where you're going to find things you've made in the past. Right now it'll be empty, there won't be anything there, but as you build your library of things you've worked on, that will be handy. Next is a messages icon. Um, this is if you start to comment on other people's projects and they start to comment on yours you'll be able to find things there. Search bar, pretty self-explanatory. About is a good place to check out some uh, information and research about coding and why it's important. Ideas is going to give you some tutorials, which you can follow step by step. Um, some people like to do that and some people don't, but I, I do enjoy that myself. Explore is going to show you projects that people have made. Um, and the cool thing about being on Scratch is if you find a project someone else has made, um, let's just open one up right here. You can always click the see inside button to see their code and then you might be able to get ideas or learn something just by observing. Um, and then next is the most important part and that's the create button. So when you hit create, whether you're logged in or not, it doesn't matter, it will load our project editor. Now this is a bit overwhelming at first because there's a lot of little areas and a lot of buttons. Um, but just to quickly show you around, over here on the left you have all kinds of different blocks and they're grouped according to function. So your blue blocks are all different movement actions. Um, you then get looks, sounds, events, control, sensing, and operators. Up here you'll notice a couple of tabs. Um, First one is code, that's what we were just looking at. Then you switch to costumes, and you can see that this particular sprite or character that we're working on is Scratch the Cat, and he actually has two different costumes. And if I click back and forth kind of fast, you can see that it makes it look a little bit animated like he's walking, and we'll explore that a bit more later. Uh, and then next you have sounds, and our Scratch Cat has one sound associated with him, meowing. You will quickly learn to not like that noise. Um, but you can add more sounds, of course, and edit things there. So just keep in mind there are those different tabs. In the middle here is our kind of blank canvas where we're going to build our projects. Um, and you'll kind of notice in the background right here is a really faded um, image of our sprite, in this case, uh, the cat. That's because you can have different sprites or different characters doing different things and therefore having different blocks of code associated with them. So if you're ever having multiple sprites, uh, pay attention to which one shows up right here, then you'll know which one you're currently coding. And then over here you have your preview window of what you have coded. This is where you'll see the results of what you've done. And there's a background, and this right now it's white, and there's a sprite. In this case, it's the cat. Um, down here you get some more information about the sprite, and this little plus button lets you add a different sprite. Um, or edit the one you have. For now, I'm just going to leave him as is. Uh, up here you have some different controls um, just as far as your view. You can make your project area bigger. It's kind of the normal view or you can go into like full screen preview mode of your project. You'll also notice right here two very important buttons. The green flag makes your code go and the stop sign of course makes it stop. So basically, I don't want to get too ahead of myself here, but how it works is you start off with an event block and then you can add other blocks to it and they snap together. That's very important. You can't have them like this, it won't work. They have to be snapped. And then once you have things together, when you press your green button, it's going to go and do whatever it is you said. 
So I'm going to stop there. That's it for the intro. Um, but soon I will add some more videos and getting into the actual coding concepts and using all these blocks and what they can do and what we can create with them. But for now, feel free to um, look around. Also feel free up here. There's some great tutorials you can check out. Um, and the last thing I'll point out up here is this globe, which actually lets you do your coding in whatever language you like, which is great for French immersion or for some of our English language learners. So anyways, that is the quick um, overview of the Scratch interface and how to find different things. Like I said, for now, just explore and get a little bit comfortable with where everything is. And there will be more soon. Thanks for joining.